Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with complex numbers. Of course, what else can we do, right? We have A plus BI to the 10th power equals A minus BI. We've done some similar problems before but they were phrased a little differently. So, if A plus BI which is the name of this channel, right? Is equal to z, then a minus bi will be z bar, which is the complex conjugate of z. Okay? So that's the first thing I want you to notice. Second thing is, if we take the absolute values on both sides, like can we do that? Yes, if two complex numbers are equal, then their absolute values are also equal because they are equal, right? So the absolute value of a plus bi to the tenth equals the absolute value of a minus bi, which is really cool. And from here we're going to get the following. We can first of all take this power outside. We have that nice property. So the absolute value of a plus bi to the tenth power is the same as the absolute value of a minus bi. But what is the absolute value of a minus bi? It's a squared plus b squared under the radical. Yes. So it's going to be square root of a squared plus b squared. What is the absolute value of a plus bi? It's the same thing because two complex conjugates have the same absolute value. And then they're equal. Hmm, interesting. Before we continue with this, I want to show you some solutions that I got from Wolfram Alpha. Uh-oh, I got these solutions for a and b. And I'll also show you by using the binomial theorem. I think I'm going to show you Oh, I thought I included it, but looks like I didn't. Anyways, well, if you expand a plus bi to the 10th power, you're going to get something gigantic. All right, now, notice that square root of a squared plus b squared repeats, so let's go ahead and call that t, and now I'm getting t to the 10th equals t, right? t to the 10th equals t. How do you solve that equation? t to the 10th equals t. Obviously, you're going to you can divide both sides by t, but you're going to lose solutions. So let's subtract t from both sides and factor out a t. We're going to get this. And by setting each yeah, equal to 0. By the way, t is real. Okay, something to remember because we're not going to be dealing with the ninth roots of 1. Not, no, no, we're not going to go into roots of unity here. So simply put, t is 0 or t is 1. Now, t is actually the absolute value of z, right? So this is, if this is 0, then from here, obviously, z is equal to 0. There is no other number whose absolute value equals 0. Okay? Only 0. Now, if t is equal to 1, then we get something interesting, right? Because this is non-negative. And when you square both sides, you're going to get a squared plus b squared equals 1. Awesome. We're going to use that information, so let's save it for now. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our equation one more time. a plus bi to the 10th power equals a minus bi. Why did I leave some space? Because I'm going to do something now. I want to multiply both sides by a plus bi. And the motivation behind it is, if you multiply two complex conjugates, you get a real number. Isn't that awesome? And when we multiply these two guys, we get a plus bi to the 11th power. And on the right-hand side, we get a squared plus b squared from sum of two squares. Wait a minute, I know, I know what it is. It's equal to 1. Awesome. Replace that with 1, and now you get a really nice equation. a plus bi to the 11 equals 1. Obviously, the super-duper complicated, brute force horrible method would be expand this, like a to the 11 plus 11 choose 1, a times bi to the 10, so on and so forth. Is that right? No, it's the other way around. a to the 10th. Okay, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to go this way. And then bi. And then you're going to get 11 choose 2. a to the 9th, bi to the 2nd, which is b squared, i squared, which is negative b, so on and so forth. Anyway, you see, there's going to be 12 terms. And then finally, to get 1, you have to set the real part equal to 1 and imaginary part equal to 0. But that's super duper painful. You don't need to do any of that because this equation is just awesome. Guess what? We're going to go into roots of unity. 
Now, since a squared plus b squared is equal to 1, we already got that, right? I can go ahead and set a, is e a equal to cosine theta and b equal to sine theta. So z can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta, right? And of course, uh, thanks to Euler, this can be written as e to the power i theta in the most compact form. And now, replace our number a plus b i with e to the i theta, and something interesting is going to happen. You can raise it to the 11th power and set it equal to 1. And guess what? This is exponentiation e to the power 11 i theta equals 1. But does that mean theta is 0 because e to the power 0 is 1? Yes, it's one of them. It's one of them. But there's other solutions. Obviously, you're supposed to be getting 11 11 roots of unity. There's going to be 11 solutions, right? So how do you find them all? You can basically write the one as e to the power 2 pi and i, and then cross out the i's and end up with something like 11 theta equals 2 pi n. Of course, n is an integer, needless to say, right? From here, theta is going to be 2 pi n over 11. And n can go 0 through 10 because I do need 11 values. If you replace n with 11, you're going to get the same thing uh, that you got with 0. Make sense? But let's take a look at a couple uh, values, for, uh, such as, for example, theta. If n is 0, it's going to be 0. If n is 1, you're going to get 2 pi over 11, 4 pi over 11, all the way up to 20 pi over 11. If you use 22 pi over 11, that's going to be 2 pi, which is basically the same as 0 radians. Make sense? Now, basically, by setting a plus b i equal to z again, we're going to get the solutions like z sub 1 is going to be cosine theta plus i sine theta, and that's going to be e to the i theta, and since theta is equal to 0, for example, e to the i times 0, that's going to be 1. So 1 is a solution, yay. And then z sub 2 is going to be e to the i theta again, but this time theta is going to be 2 pi over 11. And then dot, 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 z sub 10 is going to be e to the power i times 20 pi over 11. So some of the solutions that I showed you, they come from here. But the values like cosine and sine of 2 pi over 11, you can't find them exactly, can you? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.